Knicks fans, I'm sorry. You all are going through it right now. We just found out Julius Randle is going to undergo surgery, of course, ruling him out for the rest of the season. And there appears to be no real clarity or end in sight for when we might see OG and Anobi back on the court. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Dr. Brian Suter, and my goal in this channel is to help teach you about the medical side of the sports world. Now, we're going to touch on the updates here with both Randle and what I think is going on and what to expect with Ananobi. We've talked about Randall before, but we have not touched on OG's situation. Quick refresher on Randall. We know he suffered this shoulder dislocation back earlier in 2024. And whenever that occurs, we can see this flattening here of that outer part of the deltoid, the glenoid and the humerus. So the head of the humerus, the ball of the shoulder dislocates forward relative to that socket. And when that occurs, you almost always have a tear in the labrum, which is the cartilage that goes around the outside of the shoulder. In Randall's case, very appropriately, the plan was to try and rehab his shoulder and return later this season. If he would have had surgery right away, he would have been done for the season, no questions asked. And so unless there are other circumstances like a fracture in the shoulder or just a severe enough displaced labrum tear, this is a very appropriate decision initially by the Knicks to give him a chance to rehab and get that shoulder feeling better so that he can return. Because the shoulder surgery when this first occurred would have automatically ruled him out for the rest of the season. Looking at our biodigital anatomy tool here, if we focus on that glenohumeral joint, so the labrum, of course, this little rim of cartilage that goes around the socket. And its primary purpose is going to be to help stabilize and keep more security and stability within that joint between the humerus, the ball of the shoulder, and the glenoid, which is typically very flat. So the labrum is around the glenoid to help deepen the socket and provide more stability. The challenge in Randall's case, and what most often is the case whenever we're trying to rehab an athlete from a labrum tear or shoulder dislocation, is it's not just about pain, it's about stability. So one of the decisions for doing a surgery after you tear your labrum is do you still have feeling of instability? Because the pain might go away, but if you still feel apprehensive, if you are still concerned that your shoulder is going to keep dislocating, you're not going to be able to get into those positions to do your sport without being really apprehensive, then having some residual instability, subluxation, and then just starting this vicious cycle of recurrent injuries. So for Randall, this was never anything about pain tolerance. The pain probably quieted down a long time ago. It's about getting back in to be able to take the contact and not be worried that your shoulder is going to dislocate again because of a tear, residual tearing in that labrum and the resultant instability. The surgery that he'll undergo is almost certainly going to be to go and put these anchors to try and secure the labrum back down to the joint, repair those tears in the labrum, and help all that stiffen back up and get secure so that the shoulder is no longer unstable. They say they're going to reevaluate him in five months. Four to six months is a pretty standard expected recovery time for a labrum surgery like this. And so that puts him about at the beginning of next season. And part of the reason why they did this now is they probably feel like they sort of know what's going to happen. They probably don't feel like they can wait any longer. If they wait too long and try to give him another month and a half, two months, then you run the risk of him missing the first couple months of next season. So this felt sort of like a, you know, go or get off the pot, so to speak, moment of seeing where he's at, reassessing, having that conversation. And in this case, they felt like he has not progressed enough to where they're just going to go ahead and do the surgery to get him ready as soon as possible for next year. So I think handled very well, very normal, good sort of management and a very common expectation in what we can often see play out. Next, we'll talk about OG Ananobi and what in the world is going on with his elbow and when we might expect him back. But first, I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video a company that's just as passionate about learning as I am. As a viewer of this channel, I know you're passionate about learning. And so I'm excited to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant, a company that shares that same passion for learning. Brilliant is where you learn by doing, with thousands of lessons and topics like math, data science, programming, and AI. Their unique approach to learning features these nice bite-sized lessons that make learning efficient, but also extremely effective by not overwhelming you all at once. They started square one with the simple fundamentals of the topic of your choice and then gradually build on that complexity in a nice incremental progressive way. Their guided lessons help you develop a nice learning plan and it's designed in a way to make it fun and interactive almost with a game style approach. Right now you can try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days. Just visit brilliant.org slash brianmd or click the link in the description below. Plus they're also gonna give you 20% off an annual premium subscription. One great new topic I'm excited about is with artificial intelligence. I don't know about you, but I feel overwhelmed with all the AI in our world and Brilliant has a great set of learning modules and lessons 
to go through to teach you everything from the basics to more complex topics with AI so that you don't feel so confused and overwhelmed with the pace and change in current technology. So take advantage of this great offer and learn something new and exciting by heading to brilliant.org slash BrianMD for a free 30 days plus 20% off a premium annual subscription. Thank you again to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video and let's get back to our learning. Let's talk about OG Ananobi. I haven't done a video on his injury because quite frankly, there hasn't seemed to be much clarity in terms of what you can really focus and anchor in on in terms of what the actual injury was. This is from when Ananobi came back and seemed to kind of re-aggravate that elbow against Portland. So let's backtrack to what we do know and then we'll come forward to the present time with where we're going to end up. Initially, the reporting on Ananobi's elbow injury was just elbow inflammation. Inflammation is a very non-specific thing. You can get inflammation in muscles, tendons, joints, cartilage. You can have inflammation everywhere in that area. So we didn't know from this initial reporting, was this tendonitis? inflammation in the tendon? Was this inflammation within the joint itself or was this something else? We then saw this change to bone spur irritation in the right elbow. And again, bone spur irritation can be one of two things. You can have a bone spur that develops around the joint related to osteoarthritis, cartilage wear, something we call an osteophyte. Or you can have a bone spur that is at the location where the tendon inserts into the bone. We call that an enthesophyte. So bone spur even still doesn't narrow down specifically what the injury was in terms of a bone spur in the joint or a bone spur in the tendon. And then if it's in the tendon, it doesn't tell us anything about what tendon. There's three general areas around the elbow that we think of the tendons and having tendonitis. And so it could have been in any of those three locations if it was even in a tendon. So from the start, elbow inflammation, bone spur irritation is very nonspecific and could have been a lot of different possibilities from a bone spur around the joint to a bone spur within the tendon. If we go back to a biodigital anatomy tool here and look at a right elbow, those main areas are first going to be the triceps tendon on the posterior or backside of the elbow. Triceps, brachii, three different muscle heads come down, insert onto the bone of the forearm called the ulna, specifically the olecranon. That's the bump that we have on the backside of our elbow, triceps straightens our elbow out. So you can get tendonitis and you can get elbow inflammation in that distal or lower portion of the triceps tendon. And then if you have a lot of chronic tendonitis, a lot of irritation there, sometimes you can develop a little bone spur called an enthesophyte, where there's essentially a little bit of spurring that comes off of that olecranon that can cause some additional irritation within that tendon. Now that's the posterior side. On the outer portion of the elbow, we have the common extensor tendon. The common extensor tendon is what's effective when people have tennis elbow. The more common place to get tendonitis is gonna be here on the outside of the elbow. When we get tennis elbow, that's inflammation of that outer part of that common extensor tendon where those muscles originate off of a part of the humerus called the lateral epicondyle. So when we look straight on here, this is gonna be the humerus, the arm bone, this outer portion is the lateral epicondyle. This is going to be the medial epicondyle. And all those muscles that pick our wrist up and straighten our fingers originate out there on that lateral epicondyle and inflammation there, tennis elbow. So again, same sort of thing. You could have a bone spur coming off of this spot. You could have tendonitis in those tendons. So totally different areas, different locations for treatment, but same types of treatment options. And then of course, on the inside portion of the elbow is golfer's elbow, the muscles that come off and curl our wrist up and flex our fingers in. So really those three areas that you can have tendonitis are the main ones around the elbow. And so just those initial reports don't really tell us anything about where and what this was. When we then heard that he had surgery to remove a loose body, this complicates it and makes it even more confusing because we've been hearing about bone spur irritation and a bone spur implies that it's anchored. It implies that it's rigid either on the bone or within the joint. A loose body, of course, it's loose. There's something potentially floating around. And so we don't really know, was there a bone spur that broke off? Was there just a separate loose body that they took out of the joint? It still is a very confusing sort of injury sequence in terms of where was this loose body? What did they remove? And where did they remove it from? The initial proposed sort of three week recovery return to basketball time suggests this was probably not a lot of work done on a tendon because that's gonna be a longer recovery than just a few weeks. It implies it was as simple as going in, opening up, exposing, and taking out whatever that loose fragment was, bone spur might have been. So then in this game back against Portland for Ananobi, we see him reach in here to try and make a steal and then right away wince and grab at that right elbow, clearly in some additional discomfort. 
We also saw during this game that he was wearing a brace more on the backside, padding that backside of the elbow. Here's another example where we can see in a picture just the amount of padding that Ananobi appears to have on that back portion of his elbow. So if we just go based off of where there's going to be some bracing, where there's going to be padding and support, that to me would imply that whatever was done was done on the back side of his elbow, potentially a spur or something in that triceps tendon because he's got all this padding on the triceps area. The extensor tendon, that tennis elbow area is going to be more out here. And so all this padding on the back of that olecranon process implies that there might've been something with that either olecranon bursa or that triceps tendon. And again, you could have a little bone spur sitting around that olecranon bursa, so all this is very complicated, but the brace makes me suspect that it was something more with the triceps tendon or at least on the back portion of Ananobi's elbow. So now, of course, we're just in this unknown period where there doesn't seem to be any clear sense of when he's actually going to return. I tweeted this the other day. Shams gave some reporting that essentially they're waiting for him to just wake up one day and feel better. So it sounds like they don't even have necessarily a clear expectation of when they hope that this irritation, this re aggravation and pain is going to get better. There was some recent reporting about tennis elbow, but I never saw any actual mention of tennis elbow. All that we saw reported was that there is now tendinopathy in his elbow. And tendinopathy implies, again, irritation of a tendon, but if we go back to our anatomy model, there's multiple areas where you can have tendon irritation. And so tennis elbow implies it's that lateral, that outer portion of the elbow. But there was no actual word from the Knicks that it was tennis elbow and tendinopathy in that location. So this could still be triceps tendinopathy, which would fit with that pad on the backside of his elbow. We still don't know exactly where in the elbow this pain is coming from. All we know is that he had a surgery and he's having some residual irritation and pain of one of the many tendons within his elbow. I am not super optimistic that we're going to see Ananobi successfully come back for a prolonged period of time here this season. I think we'll see him try to come back, but I really worry that he's going to have some re-aggravation, he's gonna have some flare-up in pain. When you're trying to manage tendonitis, tendinopathy anywhere in the body, it's not something hard and fast that you have to sit out for. It's often a load management, pain management, pain tolerance type of question. And so if all it took was those few games back, reaching in for a steal to re-aggravate it to this extent where he's now missed, I believe, even more than a week, I worry that it's so sensitive to getting flared up again that when he does try to come back, he's going to just re-irritate this. So I am not all that optimistic that we're going to see Ananobi come back within the next week and then remain back in the lineup on a consistent basis. I think it's probably gonna be another week or so. We probably see him come back for a few games, maybe need to rest again, and it's gonna be this tightrope balance of how much that tendon gets irritated until we can get to the off season and do hopefully some more type of definitive treatment. You guys aren't the only ones that are really confused and just kind of baffled by all this. It would be nice to get some sense of location some clarity on that surgery. Was it a bone spur? Was it a tendon spur? Was it something in the joint? What was actually done? There's a lot of unknowns here, but how quickly things got irritated and he had to sit out makes me just feel like he's probably gonna continue to have some inflammation, some irritation in this tendon. And then depending on how sensitive he is to that discomfort, to that pain level and how bad it is, we're probably gonna see him miss some more time if he does make it back. Just really a bummer, unfortunate for Knicks fans. You guys are having a great season. Now we're dealing with all these injury problems. And so unfortunately it might be another season plagued by these injuries. That's it for the video, everybody. This might have ended up confusing you more, learning about all these different anatomy locations and the things that I'm trying to think of as I follow the story. But those are my thoughts. Let me know as always questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later.